Hello, this is Chris, ZL1CVD. Uh, I did this video here on the uh, COM port repair for the FDDX10, and I wanted to uh, expand on that a bit. I've had quite a few questions and such, and haven't had a chance for to answer them all, so I thought uh, I would uh, get back to you on that. First of all, let's, let's just have a look at... Um, Let's just discuss how the USB port works. When you plug um, a device, whether it be a mouse or a keyboard or a Yaesu transceiver, into the uh, uh, into a computer, there's, there's essentially a, well, there's a couple of key things that happen. First of all, the the hardware on the computer talks to the peripheral. And it does what we call enumerates the device. This is where the computer, its hardware, gets the the couple of numbers from the device, the uh, VID and PID of the device. One is the VID is the vendor identification, so that's who is the vendor. In this case, for our CP2105, it would say Silicon Labs, or I give it a number which represents Silicon Labs. And the VI, uh, that's the vendor ID, and the PID is the product ID. Um, so Silicon Labs might make, you know, 30 or 40 different products, and they will give each one of those a unique ID. Now, so that's the first thing that happens when you plug a device into a computer. Then, depending on the operating system, whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac, it will then go and load the appropriate software driver or configure its software to work with that device that's just been plugged in based on the VID PID. Okay, so if you're having problems installing uh, a Windows device on your computer, specifically the uh, Ayesu transceiver, Rather than just send it back to Yesu for repair, there's a couple of things you can actually do um, to confirm whether it works or not. So let's just have a look at a circuit diagram. So this is a circuit diagram of our of our FT710, the USB portion. We've got the USB socket. We have um, this here as ESD protection, so any RF that comes in will be shunted back down to ground. Um, uh, we then have our USB hub, and we have our CP2105, which is a dual USB UART, or, or think of it as the serial port over USB. And then we have our, um, this is a, a, the sound card, if you like. And there's, a, a, depending on which transceiver you've, you've got, which, which of the latest Yaesu transceivers you've got, there's a couple of different versions that they've used of these. So basically this single chip here takes sound via the hub into here and sends it to your transceiver or takes it from the transceiver, converts it digitally to USB and out through the hub to your, to your computer. Um, so those are the three devices that we have on your computer and they each have, they can each be seen by the computer when you plug it in as a device, irrespective of whether you've got the software loaded or not. So how do we do that? Well, there's a tool called USB View, um, and you can Google it, USB View, and the first one that you'll get if you just type in USB View in one word is the Windows, all about the Windows program. Uh, or if you've got a Mac, type in Mac, USB View Mac, and it, there's a, I don't have a Mac, so I don't know a lot about it, but um, I, I do have Linux, this is what we're running here. Um, but there's information on the on Mac version of it, and there's uh, also a Linux version of it. And if uh, and I'm sure if you're running BSD, they've got some crazy thing that's similar to it there. Okay, so let's have a look at what USB View actually does. Um, so we'll just get out of that. We'll just get a another command console up. For the, I'm in Linux, so in Linux we need to run 
if we just type in USB view after we've installed it, now you have to read on the internet how to install it, right, on your computer. Um, if in Linux you go to run it, and it comes up like this, saying that it can't find a blah blah blah, quit back out of it. You have to run it as the root user, and that's probably going to be the same as Mac. So you're going to type in sudo USB view. And you're going to put in your password. And I probably didn't get my password right. Nope. Okay, and here we have it. So let's expand it so we can see what's going on. Um, now, what it's showing here is it's showing the controllers on the motherboard of the computer, USB host controllers, that's what they're called. Um, this Armour 9 is my cell phone, which is recording it at the moment. I've got it plugged in so the battery don't go flat. And then I've got a USB hub. And attached to the hub, we can see we've got our USB input device. But you can see it shows us what's connected. On Linux, you're going to need to refresh when you change that. On Windows, I believe that you don't need to hit the manual refresh. It does it automatically. But what I'm going to do now, I, uh, outside of the camera, because I found the last video I did went out of focus because I moved the camera. <laughs> um, we've got handy dandy USB cable, and I'm going to plug it into a USB hub. And this connects to my FTDX10. So it's I've plugged it in, and we're going to hit the refresh. And watch what happens up here. Straight away we can see another hub, and that will be, uh, this is the FTDX10, that will be that hub. And we have a CP2105, and we have the USB audio co codec. So if we look at the FTDX10 circuit, we can see USB hub, CP2105, and we can see the PCM2903. And that's that USB audio codec there. Okay. Um, we can see on here that the vendor ID and the product ID. Go to here, we can see vendor ID, product ID, which is what I was talking about before. Um, and we can see the hub actually has a vendor ID, product ID. So if you plug your transceiver in and USB view shows these coming up, then the fault that you've got is not to do with the hardware of your transceiver. The fault that you've got is probably to do with the software that you're installing or trying to install, or you haven't installed it correctly, or the drivers aren't right. So there's no need to actually return it to Yaesu for a repair because it doesn't need it. It's a software issue, not a hardware issue. All right. Now, getting back to... Um, our CP2105, now that we've covered how USB works, and we've spoken about software versus hardware issues, um, and how to see that, let's talk about the CP2105. Now, this is, a, this is the UART chip that is used on the FT710, uh, DX10, FT991A, and FTDX101. So it uses the same, the same UART chip. Now the chip has a feature in it called um, product customization because Silicon Labs knows that when they sell this chip, they're going to be selling it to all sorts of customers and they're not going to want to, or they're going to want to customize it for their products. And that's probably what Yesu had intended to do. But unfortunately for us, Yesu have done some have done uh, what I believe is a, a major a major muck up here. You see. The chip is customizable once. It has a, a single write programmable read-only memory, PROM. It's not an EPROM, it can't be rewritten, it can only be written once. And it is written once by way of a, it has a special voltage regulator in here which generates the high voltage to program this. And it, to, to, to generate that high voltage, it needs an external capacitor. Now that external capacitor, if we go and read the instructions on here, is connected to pin 16. And you can download this data ship from Silicon Labs yourself and you can read about everything that I found out here. 
but I'll tell you now that it's it's saying here that you only hang a 4.7 microfarad capacitor off pin 16 if you intend to customize the chip. Otherwise, the chip will, will just work as normal with the Silicon Labs VID PID. All right. But if you wanted to customize it with your own VID PID, you hang a 4.7 microfarad capacitor off it, program it. Without that capacitor, it won't generate the high voltage and won't be able to be programmed. Okay, now let's just go back and have a look and see what Yesu have done. Pin 16, 4.7 microfarad capacitor, FT710. FTDX10, pin 16, 4.7 microfarad capacitor to ground. Uh, FT991A, CP2105, pin 16, we have a 4.7 microfarad capacitor to ground. And Yesu's flagship product, the FTDX101, D or MP, CP2105, pin 16, 4.7 microfarad capacitor to ground. So all these models are able to be programmed, but they haven't programmed them. And you can tell that because it has the default um, VID, PID from Silicon Labs. Now, what I believe causes the failure of the COM ports on these transceivers and what I've experienced with my own is that RF gets in and despite having very good um, ESD protection, all the ESD protection will do is it will clip high voltages to ground. What it won't do is read a packet of information that's come in or read the information that's come in on the USB port and filter it so that it doesn't put this into program mode. It won't do that. So if a, if a funny signal comes in on RF, it'll pass through here and it will go straight to both these chips. And if that information says go into program mode, this chip will go into program mode because it can, because it's got the 4.7 microfarad capacitor in it. Now I've actually changed that out on, on my FTDX10 and fixed the problem. And it won't reoccur again because I've removed that 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Other people have, now, one thing else that you should be aware of is that Silicon Labs, this company, have a software program, and I'm not sure whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac, but that software program enables you to program this. Now, I've had the question asked, well, can I run that program and just program the original VID, PID into the chip to prevent it from happening again? Well, you probably can, but I don't know about that. Um, I haven't done it myself, and I'm guessing that um, some smarty pants will get on there and, and work that out and, and hopefully let us all know. Um, and I don't see why it shouldn't work. Uh, you should be able to run that program, and it should just um, send this chip into program mode, You know, plug it in, run it on the Windows computer, because um, it's probably going to be Windows software. Go through here, put this into programming mode, and the problem should go away. But, uh, yeah... Anyway, I hope that's answered all the questions I've been getting. And um, thanks very much for all your followers and all the kind uh, kind words that have been said. And uh, if, this, if you find this of help, please subscribe. Thank you.